guys, what is happening? What's happening, happening? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hope everybody's doing good. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me say hello to everybody real quick, and then we'll get going. I need a five for five. I do want to test uh, my mic. Can you guys give me a sound check on the mic? Let me know the the volume on it. Is it better, worse, same, or because I turned it up. So I want to make sure that you guys can turn it down. Hey, Ripper, what's up? Hey, Kim Possible, Renee, Hummingbird, TJ, David, Ivan, Virginia, Mark Matheny, David B, Shell Spell, there you are. First one, got the cookie. Hey, Reds. Hey, cookies here come with Kool-Aid, just so you know. <laughs> Everybody, please like, share, and subscribe. Well, thank you. Thank you. Is it still a little low, George? Okay, uh, I'm going to adjust this real quick because I want you. I want. I need some feedback on this. Okay, um, let's go with the mic here. Let's see if I can't turn it up some more. I'm going to keep talking and see if you guys notice. Okay, I'm going to take it up pretty high. I got my gain up on it like a lot, but I'm not using the best headset, so that's why I'm asking. Shell wasn't first. Who was? Gorilla Machinist. Hey, I like that. I like that uh, name. That's pretty cool. Who was first? Who was first? Who was first, man? Who was first? <laughs> I remember being a kid and that being so important. I mean, it was just crazy. See, I got screwed as a kid, just so everybody understands. Um, my, my last name starts with a W. That's a, uh, yeah. So I always got, you know, back of the line. <laughs> hey, Piper Lynn. Hey, Brett. Yep. Yep, it sure is. It's getting close. Um, it's going to be 0.78, I believe, astronomical units when it gets to the closest it ever is to the sun. Uh, but we'll get there, you know. Is is the sound better now, Viv? Let me let me know, guys. Is that way better? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Thank you, TJ. Appreciate that, guys. Seriously, I you know I don't always. <laughs> Hey, hey, Ron, starting out with the gifted memberships already. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. For sure. For sure, for sure. Hey, I'm not sure if I told you guys yet or not, but my wife ordered just like five different bricks of cards, and they're all space-related. And they're very cool. And one of them, they, they quit making back in uh, uh, 2018. And I've got at least 12 decks of those. I'm going I'm to be giving those away. That's why I put that say that so we are again in wonderland wondering what the heck to do <laughs> yeah exactly in negativity yeah you know what though we ain't negative here thanks aa ron for real thank you we don't do things in a negative way around here i get enough of that stuff just going outside you know what i mean so you know when we uh when we do things here it's always going to be on the there, there's going to be times where we have to talk about negative subjects i get that but you don't have to present it in a negative way. I'm sorry, you just don't. And, you know, some people make their whole YouTube channels based around that. You know, emergency this, emergency that, and it just, I, I, I you know, and, and some of it, most of it is emergency. A lot of them are, right? Um, But I'm talking about the ones that will put that stuff in their title and their thumbnail and then never even talk about it in their video. You know, it's fine to put that to get people in. I get that. The goal of a thumbnail and a title is to grab people that haven't been to your channel yet. I know it sounds crappy to say, but the thumbnail and the title isn't typically for the subscribers. It's for everybody that's never seen the channel. So, you know, as long as you're talking about what you put in your title and in your thumbnails, you know what I mean? But when you don't do that, that is true crap. So... Thanks, Ron. Appreciate you, bud. Appreciate you. Yeah, guys, get over and check out Ron's channel. Shout you out. You're in my description box, my awesome channel list, Ron. So, if you guys want earthquake stuff, get over there. I'm telling you. Good stuff. Good stuff, good people. And that makes a difference. I don't send people to places that just, uh, yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to go. I gave it a couple minutes there. We're going to go ahead and jump in. All right. Um. Well, we're going to go ahead and start off with, uh, what's happening right now we're actually getting hit in my opinion right now and i'm going to show you why 
And I do believe that this is a cannibal CME, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. I just think it's arrived late. And because um, they were predicting a geomagnetic storm to have already hit. And now, yeah, exactly, Hummingbird, 100%. Um, if, you, if you put it in your title and your thumbnail, you better talk about it in your video. It's so crazy when they don't. Hey, Miss Dragon, thank you so much for that. I, guys, you guys really do. You humble me. Guys, we're up. You know how many members we have now? We're getting close to 370 members. And I, I just, I'm dumbfounded by that. It just, it amazes me. You guys are awesome. Um, so, again, we'll be talking about the cards and stuff over there. I am doing a, a members only. Either, uh, it won't be tonight because it's getting too late already. Um, I was going to come on earlier today, and I just couldn't get it done. I had so much stuff going on. Um, but um, tomorrow, I will definitely be doing that. And probably what's going to happen is I'm going to either do it, like, mid-morning, and then the next members-only stream I do will probably be in the evening because I want to hit people that are I – I want to be there at different times for people so if they can't attend. You know what I mean? Um, so look for that tomorrow, guys. And it'll probably be like a pre-stream setup. So what I'm talking about is everything I just set up for you guys, I'm going to let you guys watch me do it. And we, we can talk in the chat, too. It can be laid back. Hey, full of hope. Thank you again. Another five. Wow. My goodness. But we're going to have some fun in here. I'm telling you guys, we really are. Thank you so much, full of hope. I really appreciate it. If you prep for emergencies, it should cut. Yep, I agree. You know what I always say, uh, Mary Mary Negri? I always say, prep till you think you're comfortable and go one step further. That's what I do. And that's me. And, you know, at the end of the day, we got to be comfortable with how we're living, right? And if you're scared about, not really scared, just concerned and think about certain things, start addressing it. Address it small. Small at a time. That's how I did it. And eventually you'll turn around. Next thing you know, you got a half a basement full of stuff that you can use on the daily, even if nothing happens. That's how I prep. Um, but there's, you know, people are, you know, they live out in the country and away from the population. And even people that do, they, if you got room for it and you got the means to do it, why not? What do you think uh, Mr. Uh, SpaceX is doing? You know what I mean? All those kind of guys. If they're doing it, I mean, why would we, why should we be any different? You know what I mean? Anyway, thank you guys so much for that. I, I really, I really do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, and here in about a month or here in the next month or so, you guys are probably going to get introduced to my wife. Um, I'm going to have her come on and, you know, just during a members only stream and uh, kind of just sit down and watch with us, basically talk. Um she she is my best friend, just so everybody understands that. But okay, I'm sorry, I was squirreling again, guys. Check out your life today. I walk in the sagebrush. Okay, cool, cool. I, I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, guys, get over to Miss Dragon's channel. And check that out. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know, all my moderators they have my permission to put their links and stuff in the chat. Uh, most of my moderators know that already, so please don't. Don't feel bad I, if you if you think I don't want you to put it in the chat if you're one of my mods. I actually encourage that. Um, don't spam it over and over and over again. But at least, hey, I got a channel. Here's my link. That's fine. I'm all good with that. Um, and also, if you're a member and you want something like that too, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I can put your link in there. So, hey, it's okay, Trish. It's okay. Hey, you ain't never late, right? We were just early. Right? Ain't that how it goes? At least that's what I tell my wife. <laughs> anyway, okay. So we are in the midst of getting hit right now. Um, this is velocity. Okay, you got the sun off to the left. You got space weather going left to right here. Um, we were um, expecting this to hit a little bit early, earlier, and it did not. Uh, and if it did, then it just was not what we thought it was going to be. Now I wasn't going. I wasn't saying this was going to be big anyway. Even with it being a cannibal CME, and I'll, I'll explain here in a minute about that. Um, but it just, it just didn't look to me. It didn't look like it was going to pack much of a punch. That's all I'm saying. Now you're going to be able to see it really well here on the density. Okay, this is density. 
It doesn't tell you how fast things are moving, just how dense the particles are. That's it. So, but it does give us a really good vision, a uh, visual of what we're seeing here and what, what's actually happening. So when you see it do stuff like this, that that's an increase in space weather, that, whether it's a coronal hole stream or whether it's a CME, which I believe this is what this is. A CME and a solar, uh, a coronal hole stream can resemble themselves, you know, in a, you know, pretty, uh, they can very much alike if you don't know what you're looking at. And, but they also have very distinct features that they each one produce that if you know what they are, you can tell. And, um, this, this one here, this kind of looks like a, a, a more of a CME hit to me. Because with, with coronal hole streams, at least it's been my observation, you kind of start seeing things come on a little bit slower. With the CME, typically you're going to get a shock wave hitting. Boom. And you see it, it hits hard right from the beginning. Okay, a coronal hole stream typically doesn't do that. Um, I, they have before, but on the regular, no. I, I would say that that's a, a good way to tell if it's actually going to be a CME or a Corona hole stream. Not to mention the fact that uh, we, we're we already watching these tools, right? So, I mean, we kind of already know, have a good idea of what's going on. But again, it just, it, it's confirmation and you build confidence when you, when you uh, start to recognize those kinds of things. Okay, so this here is magnetic pressure. Magnetic pressure... Is exactly what it says geomagnetic pressure okay pressure um again you see that that is a typical cme or it can be like a cir too a co-rotational uh yeah i'm drawing a blank i don't know why i'm drawing a blank on that <laughs> co-rotational interaction region sorry i don't know why i was drawing a blank on those on that on that definition but it is a, uh, hey, hi, Leah. Good to see you, A70. Shell spoils, I said hi to you. Okay, quit squirreling, Mark. All right, so you see how much we didn't have anything going on. And then you see it start to grow, right, as far as uh, activity. And then you'll you'll see the initial hit. Here it comes. It's getting ready to, well, it reset. Bag on it. I'll just do it this way. There you go. That's the initial hit. Now, initial hit wasn't all that hard, but watch what happens. See that? That right there is a good example of compression and then rapid expansion. Boom. Okay. Now, you can usually tell you're taking a pretty decent hit with how flat our bow shock becomes. See how, see how that turned into almost a straight line? That means it hit our bow shock right in the front and it compressed it in further than, than the sides were at that time. So what I'm saying is, you guys can see what I'm talking about there. So instead of being like a, a little bow and arrow looking thing here, it goes, that would be more of a, you know, see how after it's already hit, so you get that little softer uh, turn to it. Um, that's just what happens. But you can definitely tell that that is, that, that, that initial hit right there, okay, that was a pretty hard hit. Now, I, I, you know, we it looks like we, de, you know, deflected that pretty well. Hey, Flame, I love you too, brother. Good to see you in here, man. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Okay. <laughs> like the name. Like the name. What are you looking at? This is the magnetopause. This is our Earth's magnetic field. And you're seeing uh, space weather, basically a, a plasma ejection from the sun hit Earth's magnetic field. And sometimes it puts us into geomagnetic storming. It does a whole lot of that. Um, so, and it can, you know, we can get cracks and it causes extra aurora. It, it does, and in, in worst case scenario, we're talking grid down. I mean, that's just, that is absolute worst case scenario. Um, I'll probably never come on here and say those words because I probably won't be able to if it happens. So just know that. Okay. So volume. Already turned it up. Well, thanks. Expect this. 
Good name. I like that name. Bill Bill volume. Is, or, am I low or, or am I okay, guys? Somebody let me know. I don't want to keep moving if we're not okay here. Okay, thanks, Bull Hope. Appreciate you. Yeah, Billy, um, I wish I could help you there. Um, you might reset or something. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good way to think of it, uh, Rath. It really is. Guys, read Rath's uh, comment there. That's a good way to think of it. I've got it turned up. Are we, are we okay? Okay. Um, sorry, Bill. I wish I could really do. Can't hear nothing. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate you. Okay. Um, if you guys are, uh, I'm seeing some pretty new, uh, new names in there that if you guys came over from Ron's welcome, appreciate that. Really do. Anybody giving me a chance here? I really do. I want to, you know, just be, be able to explain this in a, in a way everybody understands. So, okay. So, but we did have a flare back here too, guys, a few hours ago. It did cause radio blackouts. So a solar flare, when it pops, it gives us uh, x-ray, increased x-ray. And we're able to measure that here. And what you're seeing, this is the day side of the planet. Um, and it tip, it, and the flares will hit on the day side for obvious reasons. They get here at the speed of light. X-rays move that fast. So whatever side of the planet is facing the sun, is going to take the flare. Now, on bigger flares, yes, you can get that energy will kind of wrap around and it'll affect a greater area. But you can see where this what this is doing, right? You get this kind of bullseye uh signature. And on the stronger flares, yeah, we see we see red quite often. You start getting into uh uh R1, I mean R2 and R3 radio blackout range, which would be M flares like third m3s up to x flare um you'll you'll see red on here almost every time and also i want you guys to notice you see here on the north pole you see we got some uh energy creeping in we don't usually get that with just a flare now i'm not sure if this is just the flare but we had an eruption also and it did go to the dangerous side of the sun and when i say dangerous i don't mean oh my gosh run for the hills when we get stuff firing off the when you look at the sun to the right which is actually reverse would be it, we we call that west when we're looking at the sun our connection line to the sun is actually on that side so when we have an eruption fire off the sun that direction the protons that are in it will grab a hold of our magnetic line it can actually move backwards and and hit us with the radiation storm so and when I see this up here, I always take note because, and especially if we see it on both poles, things come in easier on our poles. Uh, that's just how it is. You got positive, negative, and that's how things travel. So when you see that, you know, up here, you might want to pause and be like, hey, is it, are we getting a radiation storm? Well, I don't think we're getting a full-blown radiation storm. Not yet. Cause sometimes that takes time. But also, here, here's how we measure that with proton flux. And it's in the basement, guys. I mean, that thing hasn't moved. So I don't think we're going to get one off of that. We could. But it's very, very delayed if that's the case. Um, usually those things will get here between, you know, I've seen them get here in 20 minutes. Um, but also, I've seen them take multiple hours to get here. So, but uh, their forecast is saying a 20% chance of a radiation storm. This is over here at NOAA, right there. Now, I also want to take note here, guys. You got 75% chance of an R1, R2 radio blackout for the next three days. Okay, and then, and this is actually a kind of a high number right here for R3 or greater. It's 20%. Usually, that hangs out around 1% to 5%. So, when we see it get higher than that, we really do take notice because an R3 is the bottom level of an x flare. And when you get X flare energy, most of the time you're going to see a CME with it. And so when you and if it comes our way, you know then we're having a lot of different discussions. But here's why 
they're saying 75% chance of R1, R2. Can you guys see all these little, those are flares. And if you remember last week, the baseline, x-ray baseline was down here. So we didn't have very many sunspots facing us. That's why. Now we have a bunch. So with that being said, those sunspots are producing more x-ray. So the baseline goes up. And then the domino effect happens in the effect like this. Our baseline is here. So any little eruption flaring from any of those little sunspots can put us into radio blackout conditions. The, the line doesn't have to move as far, right? From here to here. If it was down here, it's going to take a bigger uh, centralized flare to get us up into M-class range. So that's why the baseline is important to know. It won't take as big of an eruption to get us into M and, M and X-class flares right now. Now, this was a longer duration flare, and it was right in front of us. Now, I can't say if there was a CME with it yet. I haven't seen the coronagraphs are not uh, showing that as of yet. Okay, um, but what we'll do here, I want to show you what's going on with the, the I'm a, I call it the dangerous side of the sun. Okay, I, I probably shouldn't even call it that. It's on the side where we, we're more susceptible to radiation storms. Okay, kind of the danger zone type of thing. But this satellite hangs out a million miles closer to the sun than what we are, and it orbits around the sun with us but it keeps its eye on the sun at all times. Also, this thing catches sun diving comets like crazy. Um, it's caught so many since it's been out there. Some of them they expected, some of them they, did, they just didn't know. Hey, Miss V. Okay, so A Pan B, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm sorry, Bill. I don't know what to tell you, bud. I, I really wish I could help you. I don't know what else to do. Everybody else is hearing me, so I, I don't know if I could, if there was anything else I could do. Um, Yeah. If anybody's got any suggestions for him, you might pop it in there for him. I, I don't know. But, so let's, let's take a look. Actually, if you guys go here, you can come down here to the latest eruption. Okay? Just click right there. And this... This is what I'm talking about, this side here. Okay, that was a significant eruption. Now, it wasn't massive. It wasn't massive at all, really. I mean, it's a decent-sized one, but it's not like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen, oh, you know, all those kinds of words coming out. No. Um, but I, me personally, I'm actually more concerned. I don't want to say concerned. I'm more interested in the one before it, this one. And I'll show you why. <laughs> because it takes about three days, typically, for a CME to get here. Unless it's a really fast mover. It could be one to one to five days. It's kind of the range we look at. But normally, two to four days is kind of normal. Um, but I want to show you why I say uh, this one here is a little bit more interesting than the one that went to the right. Um, right about there. You guys see this? That that is a that is a halo signature. So that's a black occulter disc. It's a physical disc on the camera. So we can't see what's right behind it. It blocks the main light of the sun so we can get an image at all. Hey butterfly, good to see you. This is the surface. Okay. So this is actually they've got the occulter disc the size so it can actually cover up most of the corona also. You can see that over here on the red version because you don't see a whole lot of light, right? Hey, Pan B, thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for watching for so long. You have been here for a long time. You really have. Um, yeah. Piper Lynn, you got to feed the cats? Love it. Love it. Feed the cats, baby. Feed the cats. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I also had an idea, guys. Um, anybody that um, has a pet and they want to take a picture of them and send me a picture of them, I can actually make thumbnails with, not thumbnails, but uh, emojis for that. I think it'd be cool to have some of our own pets as emojis. Um, as long as it, 
you know, I can zoom in close enough and it looks okay. But I don't want to make it to where nobody can understand what it is. But I think most people can see a, a you know, understand that. I'm going to try to do it with my dog. So, just so you know. <laughs> but anyway, you got the this uh, halo eruption. I'm ca it's a partial halo eruption. It's not all the way around. So, when we see that kind of a disturbance on the coronagraph all the way around, we call that a halo. And the reason why is because it looks like a halo. No other reason. That's it. That is the reason we call it a halo. Now, when that happens, we can't see behind that right away. So, we don't know if it's going straight off the back or coming right at us. So, we have to look at other things. Different satellites. Used to be able to look at Stereo A because it was about 90 degrees on our ecliptic looking at the sun. Okay, we had a side view of the sun. A partial backside view, really. Um, so, now that... That has actually, um, that satellite has actually came back to Earth. Okay, they brought it back. And it's, I'm not sure if they're going to send it back out or not, guys. At this point, I don't think that they are. It's already way outlived its lifespan. It's for, it's performed its duties. Um, they're not going to, like, shut it off. But they're not going to, like, I don't see them putting a whole lot of time and effort into something that's that, that's that old. When they got better technology now. Um, I just don't see them doing it. It, w it really wouldn't make much sense to send it back out. Why not leave it here and give us another view from here? And that's that's kind of what's going on. So anyway, we got that. Now I'm going to back it up a couple days here too. And the reason why is we are seeing multiple eruptions. And these have are not moving fast enough to be here yet. Okay? Like this one. See the halo signatures here, the partial halos? Um, and I, I can't say that these things are, they're not coming right at us, but I can say that they could have an Earth-directed component. What that means is here in the next couple days, we can start seeing hit after hit after hit after hit. Although they might, they might be small, I don't know. But doesn't necessarily mean anything, really. They could be small, they could be whatever this, whatever that, right? But when they hit, and you get multiple ones behind it, our magnetic field has to have time to get back to its ambient state to really fend things off correctly. So if we're, if we're getting compressed already, and it hits us again, and it's, just, it's not relinquishing at all, then, yeah, we've got stuff going on. You know, it could actually increase the geomagnetic storm level. It can end up doing more extreme things so that's why we pay attention to that so let me go back here and i'm going to show you the cannibal cme okay this is noah's uh cme tracker okay um it, it shows cmes and um this one was wasn't updated last time this one was updated was on the 16th so they were thinking that this was going to be a very very dense hit when it's dense Typically, it's moving slower, okay? I, I wouldn't think of it in the way of, like, weight because that's really not what's happening. The more dense the particles, the more drag there is and, and all of that. It takes more, takes more of an explosion to actually get it moving fast anyway. So when you get higher dense material, typically, it, or higher dense particles, um, it does move slower. So, you know, and but... When the speed goes up and the density's up, that's when we take really big hits. Okay? So let me play this for you. I'm going to just pause it here. And you're going to see a couple CMEs pop off. And they they come one right there. You see the beginning of that one? I'm going to see if I can't zoom in for you guys a little bit here. That's probably a little better anyway. Yeah, that's better. So let me... uh do this and maybe I can there we go okay so you see what's happening there right an eruption about late day on the 14th into the 15th and then right behind it another one and the one behind it's moving faster than the one in the front so what happens look how fast it caught up so you're you're looking at that and they they look like they merge right they don't really, the one behind it does not eat the one in front of it. Believe it or not, 
they don't really touch <laughs> okay they get real close but you see this little section here now that's gonna like it, to us visually it's gonna look like it closes but it really doesn't close all the way there ends up being a because of magnetics Positive against positive and magnetics will push against each other, right? So this is one of the reasons why they don't really like collide into each other, right? Uh, it doesn't eat it. They, it looks like it becomes one and for all intensive purposes, it really does hit us like one CME, except for what I'm talking about right now. It will increase the density and you'll get a third shock wave in between the two. Because it's like a snowplow effect. The one in the front acts like a wall. The one in the back is the is the snow is the shovel, and it just whoop, there it goes right. So that's what I'll say. Now, um, as we get moving again here, guys, I don't know that. I do think that this is what's hitting us right now. I think it arrived late. Um, we are just we're getting ready to turn. To the 19th it already is the 19th and utc time if you're on the east coast you got a four hour difference okay so anyway as i go as i move through there like that so you can see how that hits right but there's really like a third hit in between there so um and they're not showing any of the other ones i just showed you because this is not updated since the 16th that's important to understand so, you know, that usually if they're forecasting changes, they will change this model. Okay? Um, their forecasting did change because on the 18th, <clears throat> or even on the 19th, they were forecasting a G1 storm. And it just never materialized. So, you can come down here and look. Geomagnetic activity, that's what we look at. The KP index. Hey, memory trigger. Good to see you. Modoc Rustock, what's happening? Hope Between the Dreams. That's a really cool name. Virginia. Kathy's in the house. Aloha, girl. What's up? What's going on on the island out there in the Pacific? <laughs> Aloha. Anyway, um, so yeah. Now, sunspots. Check that out. That's a lot of sunspots, guys. If you guys have still have, just listen to what I'm going to say. If you guys have eclipse glasses, because I know they were being like bought out like nobody's business, you can put those glasses on and go outside if it's sunny, look up at the sun, and guess what you're going to see? You're going to see these bigger sunspots with just your naked eye. So if that isn't cool, I don't know what cool is. Um, but do not go out there and look at the sun without proper eye protection, okay? Um, I know there's, there's a thing called sun gazing. There's actually a safe way to do that. I don't know how to do that safely, so I'm not even going to touch that subject. So, but please, we, God gave us two eyes. Don't ruin them. <laughs> it's not worth it. Put those glasses on. Get you a welder's mask if you need to. You can go to the store and buy the glass that they put in those welders masks or even use your phone okay but it's just cool to me that you can see these things with your naked eye and um something that's 93 million miles away <laughs> it just blows my mind but it, it's it's really cool but okay so this is sdo extreme ultraviolet this is a part of the light spectrum we cannot see with our eyes this is the 171 angstrom. That's the 304. This is the 211 angstrom. And these are all uh, wavelengths of light that we can't see. Our eyes cannot see these. So they put a filter on it, and they can make these any color they want. So what I'm going to do, this is the 94, and I'm going to use this one to show you guys that flare. Man, that thing is just like moving slow. I'm going to X out of that just to kind of help my computer out a little bit. Okay. So, you're going to see right here. Watch. Hold on. One more time. Okay, there we go. All right. See it just like lighting up like a Christmas tree? And then right there on the end. 
How many images is that? Wow, that's not giving us very many images. Huh. Anyway. It's like stuttering. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I, I I know there's a safe way to do it. Expect this. I really do. I I understand that. I I just I I don't feel comfortable enough to like try to teach somebody that. It's just, but thank you for putting that in there, cause you know, and I and I'm sure that there's gonna be somebody that wouldn't agree with that, and that's cool too. I don't really have a have a position on that. I just don't want to be the person to tell somebody to go out and look up at the sun if they don't know how to do it the right way. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and and you guys are smart. I mean, I ain't got to sit here and preach like that. But anyway, that's that flare. Okay, now you can tell how long duration it was because it stayed lit up for multiple, well, it was probably going on for a couple hours there. So when that's happening, you're seeing a bunch of x-ray. That's what you're seeing there. Okay, um, so let me take you up here to the 304. And we'll look at the same spot of the sun. This is just looking at a different gas. The 304 picks up ionized helium. And it gives us a different visual. And let me come back here a little bit. And so right there, you see that? That little jet right there that shoots out. I think that that was, let's double check the time on it. Let's see here. Okay, so that was at 20. And it, that might not be it. I, don't, I mean, it could be a different part. Okay, yeah, so that little plasma eruption there happened before that flare. So, you know, sometimes the flares, a lot of times, they don't produce CMEs. That's why it's important to understand that a flare and a CME are two different things. Okay? Flares and CMEs are way two different things. <laughs> hey, Rihanna Baker, good to see you. Thank you. Yes, guys, please share the stream. Please. Um, that's what keeps this thing all going. It really does. And your guys' support has just been so humbling as of late. It's just ridiculous to me anyway. Um, but sharing, sharing the stream, liking, please come back if you could and leave just a hey crappy video wages i don't care what you put in the comment section but if you do that it actually does push it out um they just want to see activity they want to see traffic so you know that's why the d the dislike and like button they're actually held in the same consideration in the algorithm the algorithm does not care if it's a good good thing or a bad thing it just wants to know it's a thing. And <laughs> so that's what I'll just say to that. But you can tell where we got all these sunspots. And that's why our baseline is where it's at. Up here. So, you know, last week, like I said, it was down here. Because we only had like three or four sunspots facing Earth. Okay. So. And. And when you come over here and look at the actual data, this is the space weather data. This is Discover. The BZ, we look for negative 6. I am not going to explain why right now. It's just the magnetic position of our magnetic field. It's just the orientation magnetically. And we, we measure that. Well, we decide that by negative and positive. So negative 6 is the threshold we look for in the red line here. And when we get to negative 6, it will light up purple. Okay, right here in this particular website at Discover. Okay, um, when that happens, that means we're in a position that we kind of coupled everything really well, and we don't necessarily deflect as well as we could our magnetic field. It actually will draw it in a little bit more on the poles. Now, the further negative you go, the more that, that we're susceptible to that. Okay, so yeah, but. On the on the other end of that, if we are if we were in the positive, what's that mean? It means the exact opposite. It means we actually deflect better. So you know that's that's an important thing to know too, right? So uh, back right here on the data, this is the density. 
okay now i'm going to show an australian model here in a minute and um i just want you guys to know that shout out to my aussies aussie 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 love my people from down under love all my people from over across the pond i love my people like kathy over in the pond the big pond the pacific <laughs> love it love it love it love y'all and um but yeah i'll be showing that model here in a second but this is density and there's nothing extreme here okay um yeah we see one about 16. four is is what we would consider normal but even at that it takes more than just a four bigger than a four density to really give us a good hit okay um speed three to five hundred uh kilometers per second is normal what we kind of consider hey that's kind of a normal range gets much above that then you know hey we're talking about fast fast solar wind or if it gets if it gets below that believe it or not guys that's not good either because what that means is typically we're, we're going to be open more to cosmic rays because that means we're not getting that much uh geomagnetic activity i haven't said this in a while but the sun actually protects us from the sun it, it's it's we have to have a balance okay we don't want to be on the basement floor here geomagnetically and we don't want to be way up here in the g5 range either right here at this three on the kp that's just an index they use to measure geomagnetic activity and a five on the kp means we we're in level one storm and then so on and so forth just like a thunderstorm warning system okay so when we're looking at this we want to be kind of between two and three and it, it's actually like the perfect geomagnetic activity that we would want we need some of it there to deflect the cosmic rays or to help absorb them and and also um <coughs> we don't want to be real high because then we're talking about you know electrical issues and things like that so that's why that's why i say the sun helps protect us from the sun now let's go over here to the uh this is the australian now this model here is the same magnetopause uh data okay the, the model i showed you guys first i actually clicked off of it there for a second um i guess i could bring it back up for a minute okay um but yeah check it out okay this is this model here is showing us visually the same data that this is now you guys are gonna think i'm stupid and crazy here well, a lot of you probably think i'm stupid but i'm <laughs> just kidding um this right here um is just so simple simply done but it's simply done well this gives you all the data you need for a, a basic understanding of what's going on plus it it's all right here in front of you at once and it's easy to understand this is the satellite line okay these are where the majority of our satellites are not all of them but the majority of them are and you can see what satellites they map out here on this key okay this is our bow shock okay that is this okay so when we're looking at this and then the, all the data i just showed you guys here the majority of it anyway i think all of it really um you can get right here okay you got your speed you got your density you got your bz it, this even gives you standoff distance and, and dynamic pressure so i mean th these it's giving you more really than that than the discover data did not much but it's basically showing us the same thing it's just different visual but this is easy to understand in your mind right it's two-dimensional and it's not trying to be three-dimensional like this one is this is taking a two-dimensional like something we're looking at and trying to make it look three-dimensional which they do a really good job with this but this is this one here is definitely easier to understand so let's go ahead and um, i'm gonna back that up again we'll look at the watch this watch what happens here okay this is a good way to show you how compression and expansion work watch our bow shock when we start getting hit see it bouncing around like a tuning fork already now look what's happening see how we're pressing because we're getting hit 
and then every once in a while you'll see it flick right up by next to the satellite line then it'll go right back out that's compression and rapid expansion so yeah okay so what we're gonna do now um dr tony phillips was talking about the double comet today too but i'm going to show you guys some different stuff here in a minute but this is all the sunspots we have facing us right now check this out you got three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve official sunspots facing earth that's a lot okay i'm just going to leave it at that that is just a lot that's all i can say there's not much more to say on that end other than that's a lot so i'll take it back here and um we're also going to talk about this tail because it did i already showed you guys the kink in its tail two weeks ago if you guys remember so but he's talking about it too so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you guys over to the website and show you what's going on so if you come over here now remember this is stereo a this is coming from that satellite that used to be 90 degrees from us it's no longer there it's from our point of view now okay so if i come over here i hit slideshow remember this is not a movie this is not 60 frames per second 120 frames per second we're getting an image like every 12 minutes and then they just stitch those together and it looks like a movie but it's really not <laughs> if that makes any sense so if we come over here we pick what what uh we want to look at so we'll start off with the hi1 from stereo ahead okay you enter a date we're gonna go let's go here on the ninth we'll start it on the ninth and but the only there is a drawback to this and uh, there is like a two or three day lag on some of this okay um so i am i'm not gonna be able to show you on this on this particular uh satellite where it's at right now I, it doesn't work that way um it's typically two to three days um there used to be a site we could go to and, and it was there and everything was in one big hub but uh mo a lot of people forgot about that site and they don't typically go there anymore so um well i guess we can do that this is the 15th so today's the what today's the 18th going into the 19th yeah okay so um let's go ahead and well you can change your resolution here too if you're on your phone 512 is the best one to use much higher than that your phone won't be able to to handle it so if i hit search and that's what it does so here we go with that you guys see what's going on with its tail i'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit and remember guys this isn't the first time that the sun's done this to this this comet i showed you guys that when it was way up here and it was kinking its tail already this is jupiter okay um no the comet's not by jupiter it just looks like it is because it's in line from the perspective that we're looking at so if we were to go outside and look up at jupiter the comet's really close to it right now so <laughs> cherry kool-aid <laughs> now you see this energy hitting that's the cme hitting hey nana thank you appreciate that thank you so much appreciate it for real it's awesome you guys are just yeah such good people i'm telling you this community is just the best not just here but the overall com community um we tend to uh take care of each other you know so anyway let me i am going to back it off a little and i'm going to speed this up just so we can kind of get this a little closer here you see there's its tail doing its thing see that now what happens is a CME hits it okay and this is not unusual when when these bigger comets come around and they're they're in an orbit around the Sun this one's in a highly vertical orbit so it, it's more it's not really orbiting like we do around the Sun on the ecliptic 
The ecliptic is the equator of the sun stretched out infinitely, and it's just an imaginary line. Okay? So, let me say this, though. That's how we tell, like, you hear somebody say, hey, that's above the ecliptic. That's what that means. It's That object, from our perspective, is above the ecliptic. So, when we say below the ecliptic, same thing. Most of the planets hang around right close to the, the ecliptic. Now, even Earth is above and below it at different times of the year. Just not very far, okay? Um, some of the planets, they, they're different, right? Um, if I remember right, I think Neptune gets pretty, pretty far away every once in a while from the ecliptic. But they're, we're all still orbiting the sun in the same direction. It's just where we're at north-south on the ecliptic, right? The equator of the sun. So when this thing starts getting close to the sun, it does instigate the sun, and it causes it to have a CME. This is a, this is a known phenomenon. It happens quite a bit. And people ask me why. Well, there's magnetics, guys. That's the majority of what causes all that. Especially when the comet will line up with, like, planets. Planetary alignment causes eruptions on the sun. We know that for a fact. So you throw a comet in there, you know. <laughs> it, this is magnetics that isn't normally close to the sun. So when this comet starts crossing over... Uh, magnetic connection lines, like from Jupiter's magnetic connection line to the sun, it can have effects. Okay? Everything is connected to the sun magnetically. But I just think it's cool. You know, I'm glad that other people are talking about this now, too. Um, I There for a couple weeks, I think I was about the only one showing this particular view. And I'm glad other people are showing it now because I think a lot of people forgot about this view. I really did. Most people think Stereo A is not being used a whole lot right now. And it's not, but th we could still take advantage of it, right? And um, just like in, there was a comet called Comet Inky a few years back, it got hit with the CME from the sun, and what did it do? It ripped the tail completely off. And and obviously it came back. And what, what creates the tail on these uh, comets is the solar wind. Okay, it's traveling through space, solar wind, it starts impacting, hitting into the solar wind, and it, that's why the tail is in the direction that it is, right? The tail is not going to face the sun. It's always going to be the uh, facing the other way. But this particular comet is actually, you know, doing one of them numbers. So, with that being said, I just wanted to make sure you guys could see that, because that was very cool. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is this. I'm going to take you guys... To go to Skyline. Where's it at? Skyline. Where you at, Skyline? I know I got it. Track Tropic Stereo Data. Windy Map. Schumann. And I did this the other day. I don't know what I did with that uh that shortcut. Wow. Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, here it is. I found it. All right. This is called the Sky Live. Now, I know we all uh, know um, Stellarium. This is very close to that kind of a program, right? Uh, but this one's cool, too. Um, the link to this is in my description. should be. Um, at least I put it there. Um, so what you can do, you can just come over here and start messing with it, right? So what we want to do is we want to find Earth. There's Earth, right? And we can zoom into it. All right. So if we come right up, right up the booty of Earth right here, we can figure out where this comet's at, right? According to Earth. This is Earth. So you can see where Inky, not Inky, but Comet 12 Ponds, uh, Brook 12P Ponds Brooks is is right there. Now I can I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of the other comments here because you can do that over here, guys. You can click on whatever you want. You can have it show you whatever you want. So there's the comment. Now remember what I said? It had a vertical uh, orbit. Look at that. 
So it's crossing our ecliptic. I think it already did. Yes, it did. So you see, this is Earth. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. All right. You see how it's below Earth's orbit? Right there. So, yeah. Now, um, I'm not sure if the... I don't think the ecliptic is here. I don't think they have that on here. Um, you can actually toggle that on or off, I would think. I, I just haven't messed with this side enough. But I think this is really cool to be able to see where we're at. So what I what I usually do is kind of do one of these. Because I can kind of see the whole inner solar system, right? Um, but yeah. Also, something else is cool about this. You see our orbit, how it's pretty much symmetrical around the sun? Look at Mars's orbit. I'm going to back off. You see that? A lot of people don't know this about Mars. This is one of the reasons why they launched to go to Mars at the time that they did. Because Mars is closer in the in the instance of in relation to Earth's orbit. See this? See how close it is here? When Mar what if Mars was over here? See how much the distance is different? So I just wanted to point that out. That's why they you know they launch at certain times of the year, why they waited. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many days it takes Mars to actually go around the sun, but you can definitely see, especially if we look at a top-down view, look at that. See how it's just offset that way? Now, Mercury is actually, its orbit is actually offset this direction a little bit. Ours is almost symmetrical. That is why we are able to sustain life as well as we do. One of the reasons, anyway. Because that means that our seasonal changes isn't as drastic. Okay? So, you know, with that being said, say we had wintertime come and we were over here. Right? If we were Mars. Then we're really, really cold. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, anyway. I just wanted to point that out. But, but yeah. Hey, Linda. Hey, Becca. Good to see you. Hey, Penny. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here is this um so i, I want to show uh shells uh yeah give me one second here guys uh shell spells she has a uh over on her youtube channel she's got like a I think like a seven or eight minute seven or eight second video of the eclipse but it shows what was in the sky at the time um let me do this hold on one second I am going to, okay, all this spinning, where's the audio, okay, there's that, all right, I'm going to turn the audio off, and I'm going to take, I'm going to transition over, so uh, you guys can hear me, right, but there is no music, correct, if there isn't any music, let me know, and uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll do that. I don't think there's any music, but I think you guys can hear me. Yeah, I don't think there's any music going on. Okay, so give me one second here, and we will get over to Shell's channel, and uh, we'll check that out. Let's go here. Okay. All right. Well, I thought I subscribed to you, Shells. I guess I didn't. I'll just type in the... Let's see here. Yeah, shells. What's your uh? Okay, there it is. Shells spells. Yeah, I, I spelled it right. Hold on a minute, guys. I'm sorry. I should have had this ready to go. I thought I did, and I didn't. I've been forgetting to do this, and I, I just yeah. Sorry, shells. I should have shown this a long time ago, and I just kept forgetting. I, it's a good video. It's only it's very short. So just hang in there with me, guys. 
Please don't leave so you guys can see her. Uh, oops. See her uh, video here. And I would highly encourage you after I show it to you to go over to her channel and check it out there. Give her some traffic over there. I'm not sure if she has any aspirations of trying to do a channel on her own or not. Um, or try to grow one. I don't know. But. Shell spells. Well. It doesn't look like it's showing up. Huh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Ugh. I don't know why you're not showing up there, Shells. I really don't. Maybe you are. Hold on a minute. I mean, I got it spelled exactly. Man. Huh. That's really weird. It's not letting me, for a reason, you're not showing up at all. Well, I hate to say this, shows. I'll have to show it the next time. I, I've, yeah. Um, crap. Didn't want to do that, but I don't know if I have a choice. That's so stupid. I should be able to get there. Hold on a minute. Just give me one second. Give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to do it this way. All right. You guys probably heard me say crap there, didn't you? So what I'm going to do... Go to her channel. There it is. I found it. I found it. Yes, I did. And here we go. Here's the, here's the video. So, okay. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to back it up. And, uh, yeah. So, let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and put that on full screen. Maybe not, because i got to get my OBS back up here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to transition back over, guys. So, all right. So, this is Shell's uh, channel. And check out, this is During the Eclipse. So check this out. I'm going to leave the audio off just so we can see it. See that right there? That's an X, right? And I ain't trying to say anything. I'm not implying anything here. I am just saying, hey, that right there. And, and I don't know where Shells lives, what region she's in, but my sky looked exactly the same. Just so you know, big old X right in front of it, right as the eclipse was getting ready to happen. So <laughs> I just thought that was neat. So yeah, I wanted to show that to you. Guys, go over here and check hers out. Um, you can go ahead and uh, somebody want to drop her a link in there. That would be cool if you could. X out all that. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to show everybody. I think it's a, it's a cool thing to look at because it wasn't just you that had that that experience. My daughter actually said, "Dad, what is that?" So yeah, I said, "Well, those are trails from the jets." Um, you know, call them whatever you want. I'm not going to sit here and argue that point. Um, and all that does is create drama, and I I'm just here to report what I see. That's it. Um, try to give people a better understanding of the models and what they're trying to show us. Okay. So, what does this mean, guys? Well, if we start getting into geomagnetic storms again, we got more coming, right? So, we're just going to have to watch it. And I was actually waiting today because I thought we were going to get hit with the geomagnetic storm earlier today. That's why I waited and did this stream at this time. So just know that, okay? Um, and also, guys, I think, let's see here. Marv should be going live here in just a few minutes if he ain't already. Um, guys, get over and check out Marf, please. If you guys don't know who Marfugel is, Marfugel News, Marfugel TV, 
His channel's in my description box. Check out the lifeboat also, please. Um, but Mark's going to be live if he ain't already live. I haven't got a notification. I've also been hearing a lot of people not getting notifications from a lot of different things. That ain't just my channel. Um, we've had outages with YouTube before, earlier this week. <clears throat> oh, really awakened. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, it's, you know, and again, I don't want to try to insinuate anything, but it's kind of hard to deny a observation like that when you're seeing it over and over and over again from different locations. It, I just, yeah. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I mean, I don't know. I I just kind of think that if it was all that stuff, there would probably be a whole bunch more of it. But I don't know. I, again, I really don't have an opinion on that, just to be honest. So I'm just going to report to you and show you what I see. And that was what Shell seen with her, her camera. She showed it to us. And I got one that's just like it. And I did not, that's not why I had my camera on, though. I was just looking at the eclipse. So, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah, there you go, Star. It's a great idea for people that don't do that. Um, and and I understand that it's kind of hard on my channel here for people to check back daily because I do stream at different times. And I am starting to narrow that down. I'm changing things around in my personal life to try to get that narrowed down so you guys know within an hour or two, no matter what, I'm going to be live even if you don't get a notification. If, you, if I'm ever live and somebody else goes live in our community, please go watch them and then come back and watch mine on replay. So, and also when, when you come back or even if you, you know, if you've already seen the video or the live stream here, please take two seconds out of your day and leave a comment if you could once, it, you know, once the live stream's over. Um, and thank you guys so much for all the support. Anybody that's gifted stuff, gifted uh, uh memberships get over and check out ron's channel ron thanks for sending everybody over here really appreciate that um and that's what we do guys we send we send send our people everywhere that's how we stay close as a community that's how we you know keep us all nice and tight and solid um we don't fight with one another you will never er ever hear me talk bad about a specific channel name I don't do that because it just causes drama. You will hear me talk about some of the subjects that those channels are talking about that I might disagree with, but I, you're never going to hear me say a name because it does no good. I'm not ever going to change that person's opinion. So why would I use their name? Plus, they're not here to defend themselves. Okay? So I, that's just something. I, I live my, my life like that. Um, and that's why I don't let people bash other people, other channels in my chat either. My mods know that. So, but if you could just check back once or twice a day as you're scrolling through YouTube. And if I've got a, a video up, please check it out. Um, but again, I'm going to get to more of a consistent thing. We had it narrowed down and then I had to throw that out the window because I had so much stuff going on in my life. So, but anyway, guys. I am going to go ahead and pop off. Um, hopefully, you guys, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, look for members, guys. If you're a member, look for a, a uh, turn your notification bell on so you guys can get the um, the notification of a members only stream. So I'll probably do that while I'm prepping for the next live stream, and and we'll just it'll be more of a laid back air uh, time, and I'll be able to not. I don't know. I try. I can't focus completely on the chat, and I can if we're doing a members-only stream. And it's good on both ways because people come here just for the space weather. I don't have to like bug them by stopping and shouting out people all the time either, right? But make no mistake. Anybody ever gives me a super chat, gifts and memberships, all that stuff, I'm gonna say thank you each and every time. Um, I know people, whatever, they can't, they can do that or whatever, but um, I may start like like what Ma what Mark does. He'll do it like once, once in the middle and then once at the end. Um, just recognize everybody that helped out. And uh, it does make a difference in my life, guys. I just want you guys to know that. 
um, and thank you for making a big difference in my life because you are. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just humbling. All right, guys, I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so if, any, if something big happens between now and then, I'll get on here for a quick update. So, anyway, guys, God bless. Love the mods. Love the mods. Thank you, mods. Thank you, Aaron, for all the gifted stuff. Miss V's in the hizzy. <laughs> Ripper, I see Aliyah in here. Um, Becca, what's going on, Becca? Love you back. Thank you. I'll tell Heather you said that. Thank you. All right, guys. God bless. Yahusha saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.